become one human family. Here we come one human family. Here we are one human family. To the moon one human family. On to Mars one human family. Asteroids one human family. Jupiter one human family. Savage one human family. Uranus one human family. Neptune one human family. Kuiper Belt one human family. Pluto one human family. Planet Nine one human family. Interstellar one human family. Back to Earth, 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 one human family. Welcome back to Earth, one human family. <laughs> back to Earth, one human family. Oh my Google. I think I need I think I need to get a tissue for my glasses. We shall see. Ladies and gentlemen. Mike Mongo pa 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 pow. How you like me now? Greetings and salutations, my people. I see you out there. I see you. It is good to see you. Isn't it good to be back? Wow. What a day. Oh yeah, you know where we are? It's Fantastic Friday. This is Mike Mongo's Astronaut Adventures, and you are a future space explorer from the planet Earth we call a human air. Insignia of the human airs. Boom, boom, boom. Look, it's Fantastic Friday, so something new for everybody. Check it out. Look at this. My Snoopy astronaut blanket has shown up. Pow, pow, pow. I love it. Check it out. I love it, love it, love it. I love it, love it, love it. Snoopy. Snoopy, what are you doing? What are you doing? Hey, what happened? What happened here? This thing just did a flip-flop. <laughs> the gimbal got so excited, it did a full 180 degrees here on Mike Mongo's Astronaut Adventures. Here for you. Here for you. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. In the future, you're going to be there for somebody. You know, all kinds of amazing stuff. We got our very first sponsor, our new sponsor for Mike Mongo's Astronaut Adventure is Yuri's Night. Yuri's Night. Yuri Gagarin, Yuri's Night. Look, sponsors, Yuri's Night. And you can go to yurisnight.net, it'll come right up. Yuri Gagarin was the first human being in space in 1961, April 12th. Night. It was April 12th, 1961. It was a day just like this. An amazing day just like this. And we sent a human being to space. And they, and they orbited the planet and came back alive. Yay. And so every April 12th or around, sometime in April, it doesn't have to be April 12th because, you know, everybody's, everybody's got a different situation. So we have these amazing parties around the planet every April, around April 12th, celebrating human exploration of, of space. Now, an interesting thing is that on April 12th, 1981 is when the very first NASA space shuttle went up to space too. I think that's significant. That's amazing. April 12th is an auspicious or important or noteworthy date. So thanks to Yuri's Night for being the very, 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 very first sponsor of Mike Mongo's Astronaut Adventure. Thank you, Yuri's Night. Dot net. Yuri's Night. Dot net. Um, let me get it. Let me get a little tissue right here so that I can just straight. Everything looks good. I look good. Everything's good. You would let me know, right? Is there anything on my teeth? You would tell me, right? So I gotta get. Uh, da, 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 da. One second. Hold that thought. Quick into the laboratory. I'm back, like better than ever. So you know, clean my glasses. People ask me about my glasses all the time. I have them special made. So you can see I got the adult version, the grown-ups, because I got the reader part right here. You can see right here. That's the reader part. 
And then I can see this is the far away vision part and this is the near vision part. Readers, readers and near, near sighted and far sighted. I got a little bit of adjustment for both. When I was you, my vision was different. And then I grew up and it became different again. Changes, we change. So, oh, check this out. I gotta show you that. A lot of good, oh, it's Fantastic Friday. <laughs> Here's something kind of fantastic. My buddy, Steve. Fantastic Steve. Oh, is his name really Fantastic Steve? I really think it is. Look, your story is one of the best, Mike. Steve. And he goes by, he goes by, his is his book right here. He, there once was a man, some would say a rather unusual man. We wouldn't say that though. He would say, he wouldn't say that though. He would say he was the most normal man in the world and that everyone else was weird. But that's not entirely true. He's the weirdo, but he's a nice weirdo. Steve, uh, Steve, hello, my name is Steve. Magnificent Steve. So Magnificent Steve sent me this book and he and I became friends. He was traveling around the United States here. I'll, I'll zip over here and see if we can uh, get some. Oh, I can do it right here. So check this out. He was driving around. He has got a car that looks like a banana. I'm not even joking. And we met, we became friends and we got, I got to drive around in that car. And then I was having a party for Yuri's night at the Kennedy Space Center where we do a lot of launches that was in the before, before the pandemic last year. And uh, I invited him to go to the party. I said, you gotta come. He's, he's like, are you sure? Are you kidding? He didn't believe me. He's like, you're not really an astronaut teacher. Uh, I really am. And I'm really having a party at the Kennedy Space Center underneath the space shuttle. And I really want your banana car to be there. And so what happened was we got the, uh, he made this book about the banana car. And then, this is awesome, put me in it. I'm not even joking. Look. When I was in Key West, we met, and he even put my glasses upside down. And he said, so it says, in Key West, ridiculous Steve, ridiculous Steve, magnificent Steve, met an astronaut teacher who wore his glasses upside down, and when he saw the big banana car, he couldn't stop laughing, and that is true, I just could not stop laughing. When I saw this, I mean, my, my buddy Paul Mente brings, he's like, you gotta come outside right now, I got something to show you. I'm like, okay, I go outside, I'm in Los Angeles now, but I was in QS and, and at the time. And I come outside and there is a giant, I mean, it's like 20 feet long. It's so big. It's a giant. Four people can, can fit in it. Banana, car. And I just started crying. I was laughing so hard. I couldn't stop laughing. And then uh, we started, and he introduced, he loved that response. That's, the, that's why he drives around. He drives around the world. Magnificent Steve to make people feel good. Isn't that a great goal? Isn't that a great reason for being? That's a terrific mission. So uh, he laughed and laughed. And when he was finally done laughing, he told Steve that he was having an astronaut party at the place where they launched the space rockets and he invited Steve in the big banana car and then laughed some more. And so if you see, it's right next to the, the, the boosters for the space shuttle. There's a banana car, there's Steve, there's the invite, there's me. <laughs> and that really <laughs> That really happened, then he made a book. How cool is that, right? Very nice. I'm, I'm really honored. Thanks, thanks, Magnificent Steve. So you never know who you're gonna meet. You never know who you're gonna meet. Remember what our friend Alyssa Carson, who is right now the youngest astronaut trainee in the world, said about when we meet people, and that was declare ourselves, declare our intention. Make a declaration. Make an announcement. So when you want, whatever you want to do, you let people know. You never know who you're going to meet. You never know who you're talking to. That's why we're always polite. That's why we say yes, sir, and no, sir, and no, ma'am, and yes, ma'am. And we open doors, and we hold doors, and we help people through doors. And we run to help. Remember, always ask, how am I helping? It is the human heirs formula. How to be an astronaut?
Be smart. Don't forget. Hey, Gimbal, come on and play over here. I see a hint about what we're talking about today. Smart. I'm going to remind you about this. What? Every episode? If I want to. Until you get the thing that you're after, my job is to make sure that you get what you're after. And so if that means me reminding you about the SMART formula, skills. Manners. Action. Everybody likes action. Resolve. And then teamwork. We never do it alone. It always takes teamwork. Get skills, develop manners, take action, learn resolve, and be and practice teamwork. Get skills, learn manners, take action, get resolve, and practice teamwork. How do you be an astronaut? Be smart. That's it. This is it right here. So these are the things. Remember, skills, manners, action, resolve, and teamwork. Skills, manners, action, resolve, and teamwork. A resolve is a resolution. And a resolution is like, I, res I am going to go to space. I am going to work for the ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization. I am going to work for Jap uh, Japanese Space Organization. I'm going to work for NASA, the U.S. Space Organization. You make your declaration and then you share it. You announce it. An announcement is an action. You let people know who, who you are and what you're going to be doing. You will find the people. You will see who supports your vision for yourself. You will see who criticizes it. You will see who, who encourages it. You will find out who wants you to succeed in your vision for yourself. Don't get constructive criticism wrong with negative criticism. Constructive criticism is when I say, you know what, if you want to do this, you need to practice, you need to get some skills, you need to practice manners, you need to take action, you need to learn resolve, and you need to practice teamwork. What is it? Um, learn skills, uh, get, learn, learn, acquire skills, practice, man practice, have manners, take manners, get manners, learn manners, acquire skills, learn manners, take action, get resolve, and practice teamwork. That's what it is. Practice, get, take, learn, acquire. I like it. These are important things. Wow. I wonder how important they are that I say them over and over and over again. So... You already, already know this stuff. It's Fantastic Friday. I'm keeping it light and friendly. Plus, this is an exciting one, and here's why. We're going to talk about one of, we're talking about right now. One of the most... You know, it's funny. You ever notice how the feeling of being excited is... You ever notice how the feeling of being excited is the same as being nervous? It's the same feeling. It's how we feel about that feeling. It's, the, it's like electricity. And if we're nervous, we're afraid of it. And if we're excited, we like it. And that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about the thing that produces that. We are talking about danger. Dun, 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 dun. Danger. 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 It's exciting, right? Or is it, or, or, or do you feel nervous? Are you excited that we're talking about danger? Or are you nervous that we're talking about danger? Now, I want to show you something. This is cool. I got to show you. Look. Danger. Danger. When people say danger, 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 it's a warning. It means stop and think. React. If there's a fire... What do you do? Do you run to the fire or do you run away from it? Depends. If your cat's in the fire, maybe you run to it because you're getting your cat. 
If, if everybody's safe and you're getting yourself safe, you run away from it. It depends. Still, both are dangerous in a way. Here, let me get this thing. Here, watch my, watch my helmet for a second, will you? I thought this was really interesting. This is my shaving kit. Okay? Doesn't look dangerous, does it? Does it look dangerous? Well, it is. Let me show you why. Got a razor. Razors are dangerous. If I put my hand in here and I'm not paying attention, I can cut my finger. Like I think I have even. Where's a cut? Oh, look, right here. Look, that is a cut from when I put my hand into the shaving kit. That's a real thing. That really happened. See it? And I just caught it. Danger. How about this? How about this? Where are these things? Tweezers. Danger. Right? Look how dangerous those are. These are fine. These are really fine. These are for like splinters. Really fine splinters. But they're dangerous, right? I mean, what if you fell on those? What if you're running with these and you fall on it? What if somebody, what if like you stick your hand in there real fast and it goes into your fingernail? That could happen. You ever had that happen? Like with a splinter under your fingernail? That's the worst. Oh my gosh. Danger. A lighter. Fire is dangerous. Danger. My finger near the fire. Danger. These are dangerous, right? Everybody knows that fire is dangerous. And so why do I have a, why do I have a lighter in my shaving kit? Sometimes I need to sterilize this, these. So I just put that right there and then sterilize it. And you can even see there's little black tips right there. See how the tips got black? That's from the, the carbon that fire that forms while, while I clean it. These are the piece of tissue and clean it off. Watch. And, there, and there's the black right there. There's the carbon. Danger. Well, now here's an interesting thing. Here's some uh, tape for if there's an injury. That's in case of something happened after danger. But there's other stuff in here. What else would be in here that's dangerous? That's dangerous. Scissors. Danger. Danger. It's funny because you think I'm joking, right? But the stuff we, we take, it's the regular stuff that's mostly dangerous. We like, we don't usually encounter lions. Danger, needles, danger. Put an eye out. You can poke yourself with these. You put your eye out. People say stuff like that. Look, here's a hat pin. I keep it in here because danger. Danger in case I need a, a, a long pin. I keep it in this little container. Pretty good, right? So, this is, oh, look. Since I travel, I used to travel a lot, so I would keep this in case I had an upset stomach. Like, you ever had a, a really bad upset stomach? Medicine is dangerous if you take it when you're not, when you don't need it. Danger, danger. So, the point is, is that, that is it, is it a lot of stuff can be dangerous? Like regular everyday stuff can be dangerous. How do we discern? How do we tell what is dangerous and what isn't? Now that is where, that's where things get interesting. You ever have a friend who isn't really, who doesn't pay attention, who bumps their head, drops stuff all the time, always running into things or trips other people because they're not paying attention or is like, you ever have a friend like that? Have you been a person like that before? I have. I have. When people, has anyone ever said to you, don't be so clumsy? Well, there's a reason for that. When we say to people, don't be clumsy, we don't want to, we don't want to put people in danger and we don't want, we want other people's not to put, uh, other people not to put us in danger. So that's, that's sort of important. Very important. And why? Because of danger. Danger. Danger is a thing that 
the older, the, excuse me, hold on. Let me, let me put this away because I just took it out, right? So now I get to put it back. Because when you take something out and you use it, putting it back is, is part of the thing. Wow, I bet you think none of this has anything to do with astronautics when in fact it all has to do with astronautics. The whole thing has to do with astronautics. Common sense is, the, is what connects all of these things. Do, you, do we walk in front of cars in traffic? No. Why? Common sense. And it, it's, it's nonsense. To, it would not make sense. Not, it, it, would be, it would be illogical, impractical to walk in front of a car, walk in front of a moving car. You ever see how we teach little kids not to walk in front of cars and not to walk in the street, not to walk in traffic, not to touch strange animals? Because strange animals, like a, a strange dog, you never dog, a dog, dog is its own person. They don't, we don't know what a dog is going to do. We don't speak dog. So even a dog that people love and trust sometimes is like, who is this person? <sighs> it happens. So practicing common sense. Here's a good one. So if you see a dog and you go to pet it, right? You're going in to pet it, and then the dog goes. <laughs> common sense is that part of our thinking that tells us maybe we shouldn't pet this particular dog. Or if we're going to pet a cat and the cat says, we know that if we put our hand in closer, that cat might scratch us. Common sense. Danger takes a while to understand, to get used to. Like when we watch movies, we always see, hey, Gimbal, over here. When we watch movies, we always see uh, people like in space doing things that are dangerous, like a, like a spacewalk. It always, uh, I see the people at the International Space Station using a, a unit that kind of flies around and they're not connected to anything. And I look at it and I think, wow, that looks dangerous because what if that thing stopped working? How would we get the astronaut back? Because it's like, ooh, it's kind of scary. Like, is it, am I nervous or am I excited? I'm nervous. I'd be nervous on a, that little jetpack thing that, that astronauts use to go around the space station. Yeah. And so you think it's important that the astronaut knows how well that, that, pe that particular piece of equipment is working when they use it? Think about what I just said. Do you think that it's important that the astronaut themselves knows about the integrity, how well that piece of equipment is working when they use it. Did you know that when pilots get into jet airplanes or jet airliners or small aircraft, they always check the engines. They always check the electrical. They check the fuel lines. They check the wheels to make sure that the wheels are solid or not going to explode or come off. Did you know that pilots always check their equipment before they use it? Race car drivers have people who do that for them, who are always looking over the equipment. When people are working on a computer and they're a computer professional, like one of my skills is a computer professional, I like to figure out how things are before I use them. Starting to get it? It's, it's sort of the opportunity that we have, and it prevents danger. When we go outside, when we go outside, when we're in a strange place and there's somebody that we don't know and they come up to us, we learn, am I supposed to say hi to this person? Are, are my friends with me? You know what I mean? Oh, here's a good one. If someone comes to the door, do we open the door without knowing who they are? If they come to the door and knock, do we open the door? No. Do we unlock the door? No. Mm -mm. Especially if we're home alone. Holy moly, no way. Man, when I was you, my mom drilled it into us. I mean, she made us realize if someone comes to the door, you never, ever open the door. Yeah, unless we're here. Never. No matter what they say, you do not open that door. So that was good. That was a good lesson. Keeps us safe as children.
Because when we're grown-ups, we can sort of take care of ourselves a lot better. When we're you, uh, you know, it's good to have friends. It's good to have grown-ups who support us and, and protect us and defend us. Most people are good. It's been my experience. Most people are good. And some people, I don't know what's wrong with them. Some, maybe they're sick. Maybe they're broken. Maybe they are criminals. Danger. Like, we love superhero movies, but we never think about supervillains, really. So what's going on with supervillains? Why would someone like to hurt everybody? Sometimes when people have been hurt, they hurt other people. Have you noticed that? Like, people who are bullies. You ever think about why a person is a bully? It's not usually because they like to hurt other people. It's usually because they hurt themselves. They've been hurt themselves. And so they hurt within and they're trying to get rid of their own pain by putting it on somebody else. Which doesn't make it good or acceptable, but it makes it understandable. So when we learn these things, we learn how to stay out of the way of people who are looking to hurt us. Because they hurt. That's pretty good advice. Now a car doesn't have feelings. So a car is not, a car's not looking to hurt us. A rocket ship in, that's going up to space doesn't have feelings. So we get to pay attention to it to make sure that it is working properly. And that's part of the job. It's our responsibility. And this is something to think about when you, when you think about what it is that you want. You think we talk about teamwork. To be part of a team, you bring, you bring skills to the team. Common sense is a pretty good skill. If people have to watch out for me on a team, well, that makes me a burden. That's called a liability. That's not a plus. That's a minus. But if I watch out for other people, like I do, I'm always looking out for kids. So that's a thing I do. And that's because my, the very first job I ever wanted to be was a superhero. It was superhero, astronaut, and rock star in that order. And so, and, the, and so I remember how the reason I wanted to be a superhero is because I needed a superhero when I was you. So now I get to be that superhero, which is awesome. And I've, I mean, like, it is so fun helping people. Wow. People are in danger sometimes. What if people aren't paying attention and you see them and you can stop them from getting hurt? That's the greatest. That is Awesome. So that means paying attention to our surroundings, which is, that is a major skill. When we are you, we don't, have you noticed how younger kids don't pay attention to their surroundings as much as you do? And, and students and, and kids that are older than you pay attention to their surroundings even more? Have you noticed people notice things that you haven't noticed before? I have, even as a grown up. Some people have amazing powers of attention. They have, they have, uh, what is that called? Um, perception. Some people have amazing perception. They perceive, they notice things around them. It makes a big difference. It's very cool. So, you can be that person. You can contribute in this way. It's, it's a really big deal. You have that power. You have that capability. And... Learning what is danger and what is not is part of that. Here's a funny thing. I don't know if you've ever thought about this. What about instincts? Have you ever heard about, like, you know how animals have instincts? They can tell when something's up. Like animals, animals have to have refined or sharp tuned instincts to keep them safe. Because a lot of animals don't have anyone else looking out for them besides themselves. Like dolphins are always paying attention for really big sharks or killer whales. And so are seals. Seals know that killer whales will eat them. So seals are, even though they're playful, and I don't know that there's anything more playful than a seal. And dolphins are also very playful. They're always paying attention to their surroundings. So it's, it's a, it's, this is, this is part, part of, this is certainly part of astronaut training. Holy moly, just the coley. Where did that thing go? Where did I lose that? Where did it go? That's interesting. 
Oh. Curiouser and curiouser. Here. I have an I have a formula that reminds me of smart. Skills, manners, action, resolve, and teamwork. I have, a, I have another formula. It's in my book, The Astronaut Instruction Manual. Let's pull it out real quick. Oh, look, open right up to it. Grasp. Grasp the situation. React. Save pals. Always be ready to grasp. Grasp the situation. React. And save pals. Getting prepared. Space will be unpredictable and dangerous and unforgiving as the sea has been to sailors. The desert has been to travelers, the cold to explorers. Therefore, be ready to grasp the situation that's taken your surroundings. React, save your life and your pals. In space, we always have to be ready to grasp so that our next breath isn't our last gasp. So grasp so you don't gasp. Grasp means grasp the situation. React. Don't just stand there once you understand what's going on. Grasp the situation. Take it in. Pay attention to your surroundings. Then react. R G R A S P. Then save yourself and then P save your pals. You cannot save your pals if you don't save yourself. Sometimes people sacrifice themselves like I know I know situations where parents have sacrificed themselves to save their children. And you know why? It's not because the world is a dangerous place. It kind of is. We don't have saber-toothed tigers anymore right now. It, so it's been more dangerous. We have antibiotics. And in the past, before, when you got a cut, you, we didn't have antibiotics. A person could get an infection and just die. But now we have medicine to take care of that. But it's still, it's still like we, if you cut yourself, grasp the situation, react, clean the cut. That saves yourself. And then you, that helps your pals too because everybody wants you around. Everybody wants you around. So danger is a big part of, of this whole astronaut experience, but it's also a big part of life. Have you ever had a person have a conversation with you about danger? I know people have conversations with you about what's dangerous but we don't really think about danger. Like when we, we're out playing and we're playing sports and we're doing interesting things, like how about even cleaning? Look at this, check this out. So I've got this chemical right here. This is like a, a disinfectant. It's got bleach in it. Hold on, check this out. It cleans stuff, it's good, right? Go into the lavatory. Welcome to my underground lavatory. Check this out. Chemistry. This has got bleach. With bleach. This has got ammonia. This cleans windows. This, this is, you can use to clean bathrooms and everything. And we use both of these in bathrooms. But if we spray them together, I don't know if you know this, but ammonia and bleach together make a deadly poison. People have died for by not being able to breathe because of mixing these two things together. The blue stuff and the white and the clear stuff. Bleach is clear. Ammonia usually has this blue. It's also clear, but this a color this way for whatever reason. So we knowing that common sense takes learning. Like gimbal. <laughs> so knowing that takes learning. Like we don't, we don't, you don't just come knowing that those things don't get mixed together. And sometimes we just like, okay, well, one cleans one thing and one cleans another. So I guess together they'd be even better. doesn't work that way. Now, the funny thing is you can mix soap with ammonia and you can mix soap with bleach and you're okay, but you can't meet, mix bleach and ammonia. That's a, for instance, um, 
people use fire to cook every day. But if we had just matches or a lighter or something, then, and start playing with it, like look at this. Wait, I use the lighter around this with these fringe edges. Could catch on fire. Then it would catch the bed on fire. And then the bed would catch the tapestry on fire. And then tapestry could catch the seal, the, that, that wood up there on fire, like the roof. Fire spreads. That's why we don't play with fire. Can you use fire in a controlled setting like a kitchen? Yes. Can you use fire in a controlled setting like a, a fireplace? Yes. Can you use fire in a controlled setting like a campfire? Yes. Can you use fire in a controlled setting like a laboratory? Yes. Knowing that, that's common sense. That's from, but it's, it's, not, it's actually uncommon because we learn those things. We don't come knowing that. You ever learn, you ever understand that something is dangerous that somebody doesn't automatically understand is dangerous? It happens all the time when you're working with students who are younger than you. So if you're working with somebody younger, you, you ever teach them what's dangerous and what's not? Not to make them afraid, but to make them safe. Being afraid of everything doesn't help. If there were saber-toothed tigers, I'd probably be afraid of them. They were like 10 feet long and had giant, giant fangs right there. And we're trying to clone them right now and bring saber-toothed tigers back, believe it or not. Wow, crazy, crazy, like Jurassic Park. But it's the future, these things happen. So would it be dangerous then? Yes. You ever see somebody put their hand inside a cage of a, of a wild animal at a zoo? Yes. Have they got bitten or worse? Yes. No common sense. Look at the big kitty cat. <laughs> see what I mean? That's common sense. You ever been in a situation? Here's another thing. Did I mention instinct? Yeah. How animals have an instinct about what's safe and not dang or, and dangerous. You ever notice how animals know like because they're, and that's because their perception is so high. Danger is an important part of life. I'm not afraid of danger. Sometimes things that like you ever, you ever done something that's really exciting. That's a little dangerous, not because it's foolhardy, but it just comes with part of the experience. So surfing even can be dangerous. People bump their heads on the, on the reef underneath the waves, depending on where the waves are pretty frequently and get knocked unconscious. And if you don't have a friend around, they could, you could just drown underwater. You don't have anybody to pull you out of the water. That is dangerous, but surfing is also fun. How about tree climbing? People fall out of trees and die all the time, it happens. But is tree climbing fun? Yes, especially if you have a mango tree full of mangoes. The funnest. I love to climb trees. In Jamaica, kids, little kids climb, 100 foot, 150 foot coconut trees regularly. 50 feet, no problem. Little kids climb 50 feet tall coconut trees to get the coconuts. Maybe you do. Maybe you do. And when you start young on small trees and you get older and become really good at it, you're not afraid at all. You understand that if you fall, you'll break a leg or an arm. So that's why you hold on tight. When Raphael used to climb in the trees as a little kid, I'd say you're like, whatever you do, if your feet slip, you hold on with your hands for dear life. You hold on. And then you get your foot back up. You don't let go. And he did. He always held on. He didn't let go. He always held on. And that, and that worked out. What would be another thing that is dangerous? Sports. Sports are dangerous. That's why we take precautions and wear pads. Like soccer is less dangerous than rugby. A lot of impact in rugby. And rugby maybe is less dangerous than, well, rugby and football, American football are similar. And cricket is less dangerous than American football. And tennis is less dangerous than, than cricket because cricket has a hard ball and tennis has a softball. So, we, we make choices, we, we understand the, what we're, what's at stake, what, we're, what, what the danger is, understanding the dangerous part of it. What about race car driving? What about astronaut? 
these are dangerous activities. So we do everything in advance to make it as safe as possible. What about diving under the, to the deepest part of the ocean? Super dangerous. And do people do it? Yes. You know, Loretta, Loretta Whitesides, who founded Yuri's Night, our first sponsor, she dove down to the deepest part of the ocean with James Cameron, who yeah, uh, did the movie um, Avatar and Titanic. And super dangerous. And had the best equipment possible. And it worked out. See what I'm saying? Because she was paying attention before she went in. She knew the risk and she made sure that all the equipment was top shelf and the people who were in charge of the equipment were top shelf and which means the best. And then, the, then made that, that chance. When we go to space, is there danger? Yes, there definitely is. When we go to space, there is definitely danger. That's why I'm talking to you about danger. Because if you don't want danger, if you don't want to take a chance, if you're not interested in that, then you can serve, you can be part of the people that work on the ground. You can be some of the mathematicians involved. You can be a physicist. You can be an engineer. There's so many different roles. You can be a graphic artist. You can be an artist who creates work that gets, take, that gets taken to space. You can be a software coder. There's so many different roles. You do not have to be a, a human heir, a space explorer, to explore, to go to, go to, work in space. You don't even have to work in space to work in space. People who contribute in other ways. What about nutritionists? Nutritionists contribute to the space program totally. Uh, like a Dr. Sian Proctor, in addition to being an analog astronaut, she's a nutritionist. Meals for Mars. So she's coming up with the meals that people are going to be eating on the way to Mars. See, less dangerous, less dangerous. But people who work on rocket fuel, more dangerous, very more dangerous. Those chemicals that I just had right there, there's all the po uh, jet fuel is super poison. And there's some people who are really into that. You can't even get it on your skin. And they're like, awesome. I get to use these really thick, crazy gloves. You can barely move your fingers in. Awesome. And for some people, that's amazing. Or the materials, the, the epoxies, plastics, Synthetics, alloys, people work in space program come up with these, with all of these. Manufacturing, the thing that creates, it cuts all this, that cuts it all out. It makes this, it cuts the glass that goes into the lenses. Textiles, we have special fabrics that go to space, less dangerous. Well, it just depends. A cutting, something that cuts can be really dangerous for sure, but maybe that's exciting to you. I want you to have all the possibilities available to you. And I want you to be as cautious as you can be and as safe as you can be while you pursue whatever goal you're after. And the way to do that is to practice common sense, to be aware of our surroundings, take in, be perceptive of our surroundings, surround ourselves with the best we, people we can, teamwork. This is the way that we succeed. This is how it happens. So. That's a pretty good way to, like, that's a good over, that's a solid overview of danger. There's probably a ton more to talk about when it comes to danger. Swimming, learning how to swim. Most astronauts know how to swim. I would say all astronauts know how to swim. Did you know that? So practicing and learning swimming is going to be essential if you want to be an astronaut. Is swimming dangerous? Sure is. If you're not good at it, you can drown. Drowning is dying. Dying is dangerous. <laughs> death, death, danger is all about death. Without death, there's no danger. And yet, when I was you, I would dive down to the ocean down to 80 feet. Up until my 40s, I was going down to 80. I can only go down to about 50 right now. I don't want to go down deeper than that because I'm 55. Um, I'm not at the, I'm, 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 I'm on the downward. Like when we're you, we're, we're getting better and better and better and better. Well, I've already peaked and now I'm on this. Now I'm going down, 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 down. Not down underwater, but... Like as we get older, our bodies aren't made for the sort of things that you're fantastic at and you are only going to get better at, which makes a great, me a great teacher and you a great future astronaut, face space explorer or space, a space professional or a terrific human being who I just want to be friends with. That would be great. And the only way that happens is when you take care, you, you practice precautions, you do this stuff like react, uh, 
uh, resp uh, respond, no, grasp. Uh, grasp the situation, react, act to save your life and your pals. Grasp the situation, react, act to save your, your, your life and your pals. That's it, grasp. Got it. So you get to do these things. And, and I, I think that talk, it's funny because didn't, isn't it funny that people, we don't usually talk about danger. Isn't that funny? And yet it's a really big part of our life and how we feel about it. Are we nervous about it? Or are we excited about it? That's the thing. That's what, that's what distinguishes it. And that's how we should approach life. If we didn't approach it that way, then either we're going to, we're going to fall off the side of a, a mountain, side, fall off a cliff, get, get blown up, um, uh, drop down a hole, uh, trip and, and, uh, and, and knock our head, all the different things that are possible. And when we do, none of that stuff has to happen. It's good to have that small stuff happen when we are you so that the big stuff doesn't happen when you're me. Got it? That's a, that's, that's, that's a deep subject. That's, that's dense. That's full of information. We don't think about danger and it's, and it's important to think about. And it's important to talk about danger. Who are you? How do you respond? If there's a fire, do you run to it or do you run from it? That's has to do with grasp, grasp, uh, get the situation, grasp the situation, react, act, save yourself, save your pals. So if you're, if you, if you're in a situation where you know that the best thing to do is run, do that. If we have responsibilities, if there's a brother or a sister or a cat or a dog or, or, and there's a car coming, we, we snatch them up and pull them out of the road because we're in charge. We're older. In the same way that when I see a young student and they don't know what's going on, I jump in and save the day all the time. It happens all the time. If babies fall off couches and grown-ups catch them all the time because we're always paying attention, taking in our surroundings, not letting things slide. And as you get older, you're going to get better at this. Thinking about it automatically makes you better when you think about it. And it relates to how am I helping? How am I helping? How am I helping? All right. Look. Got a couple cool things right here. <sighs> you know, I got to say... Um, Rishikesh, 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 thank you very much for reaching out to me. Rishikesh is, it's so cool that Rishikesh reaches out to me and says, hey Mike, uh, is the show today? And does, he likes, he, uh, they, Rishikesh reminds me. I think that that's cool. I think it's super cool to do that. Thank you very much. Yeah, so I get these cool messages on Instagram and, uh, Let's see if there's any other other cool ones that popped up. Instagram really is an amazing thing. So, okay, I think that that's that's everything for today. The reason me and you talked about dangerous is uh, because I I'm here to give you the the thoughts and skills that you're going to need to succeed. What you need to succeed. I'm giving you that. It's a big world. Oh, hey, can I show you one thing before we leave? Before we call it a day, check this out. Let's go into the outdoors. It is Fantastic Friday, and we almost always have plants on Fantastic. Fantastic. Remember the remember the ginger we put in? Look, it's growing really well. Look how big it's got. Look at that. Poking through. Space plants. Ooh. There's somebody I needed to tell you about. Somebody's helping me grow some space plants. They have a space plant YouTube channel. Let's find them. Mm-hmm. Is that Ashcott? Let's see if it is. No, not Ashcott. Anish. Anish. Anish is helping us grow space strawberries. We're working on it right now. And space citrus. So, 
Pow, pow, pow. <laughs> Every single episode you watch makes a difference to me because every single episode you watch is, is one step closer to you becoming the person that, that you want to be. What makes me happy is thinking that you're going to get to follow your dreams, that you're going to get to pursue and achieve your goals. That really makes me happy. When I was you, I wanted somebody like me in my life. I never knew in, in that, that I would grow up to be the person that I wanted for someone else. So when you succeed, it's like that kid I was, that they succeed. So that's why I'm proud of you. That's why I love you so much. You're the kid I was. And I got to grow up to be the superhero I needed. And I get to be that person for you as an astronaut teacher. And I look forward to watching you succeed over the course of your life and being part of it. You stick around, I'll stick around, and together we're gonna make this world the best place it can be and the future more amazing than anybody ever imagined together. Skills, manners, action, resolve, and teamwork. In the words of my people, over and out, see you next time, pow pow pow. Are you still there? <laughs> Look, you know what's funny is that I always end the show the exact same way, and I was like, oh, what, what happened if I go on a little bit? Like, would anybody notice? Like, don't forget to subscribe, and, and uh, if you have a, if you have a parent that is interested in buying me a, a tea, they can go to Mike Mongo. But if you're watching right, then go to Mike Mongo and click on Buy Mike a Tea. But if you're watching right now, why don't you message me on one of the platforms, and I will send you a sticker. I'll send you, look, I'll send you one of these cool, I got a bunch of great stickers. I will send you some cool stickers. Look, I love this Space Cat sticker. That's a great one. And I got, also got this one right here. I got a bunch of the ULA stickers. So if you, and I got the One Human Family sticker and I got Yuri's Night stickers. So if you stuck around and you saw this, message me like on Instagram and I will, and I will send you, I don't care where you are in the world, I'll send you a sticker. You got it? All right. In the words of my people, our people, Pow, pow, pow.